Hey guys, I'm back. Welcome to Tech Savvy Buyer, and today we're going to take a look at the newest modified controller for the PS5 from Mega Mods. This is the DualSense 5 custom modified controller by Mega Mods. You can hop on their website, and I'll leave links in the description below for you guys to go ahead and configure your own, and also show you what are the different options that you get. So, as pictured here with this controller, this is a controller that comes with the different mod attachments or mod packs that you can get assigned during the time when you customize your controller. I've also got a pair of back button attachments on this, as well as some mechanical trigger stops on top. Now these mechanical triggers are not adjustable, so you can't you know, change the level of how deep you want it to go. So for people out there looking to have that spongy type feeling, you're really not gonna get that with the mechanical button. So just another disclaimer out there for you guys to keep in mind, especially when you play games for the PS5, like some of the first party games where you have to have that full tension being squeezed maybe a little bit of a bothersome thing to use with mechanical ones. Now that we've got that out of the way, so while I have showed you guys a modded controller here, I also have another controller from Mega Mods for the PS5 that I also customized, except that is a macro controller. And in today's video, what I'm gonna explain is what are the primary differences between the macro versus the modded controller. So if that's something that you've been looking for, stick through to the end of this video so you can get a good understanding of exactly what that is. Okay guys, so if you've been following my channel for a while, first of all, you'll know that this is my first video after probably about a year's time. And so we've got some changes going on in the back that's still being worked on, but you may also recall that I did a video on the modded controllers from Mega Mods for the PS4. And I did that back in February of 2020. Now these controllers are very similar. And actually before I even get into the similarities and differences and whatnot, one thing I do wanna call out and give a shout out to Mega Mods for is the fact that we've got some nice packaging coming with the controllers now, and they're not shipping in their original DualShock controller packaging basically. So here is the packaging that you're going to get when you order this controller depending on you know whichever one you get they give you the nice box so it makes for a really great gift if you're going to gift to someone it kind of shows that nice custom touch and it's not really just something you know an afterthought really. I was really impressed by the way that this was packaged you've got all the different optional add-ons that they tell you in the back for the different mods that you can use. It's really nice packaging altogether. Now when you open up the box and here is where I'm going to show you guys my PS5 macro controller. It's a different color scheme. Let's go ahead and take a look at this guy. But straight out of the way, we've got one other box inside. Pop this one open and boo yeah, here we go with our red controller. So this one actually gave me some more customization options to put different types of thumbsticks on here. So you can see I don't even have the thumbsticks installed yet and that's actually still in the packaging which I'll show you guys here in a second. But I wanted you to see the different type of customization options you have. So you could see I did a white and red controller here. And before I had kind of a RNG with the Midnight Blue limited edition from the PS4 500 million edition system, they have those color schemes as well. So you really have a breadth of different customization options. If you see up close, you could see that you can change the lettering inside the buttons. You can change the top triggers. You can add some added back attachments. And of course, you have the little LED indicators on top that, tell, that tell you basically what you're mapping and you know how it corresponds. So this is gonna be your life and death saving thing for when you're doing your programming. And also right on top of the bat, you could see the difference between these two is that this guy only has one of those LED sets and this one has two and that's because this one has one dedicated for the back button to do simple remap functions as well as one that corresponds to the different types of mods you've currently activated in your controller. But before we jump into this in super detail, let's go ahead and take a look at what else you get in the package with your controller. So as I mentioned, you get your controller. Now on top of that, inside the box right here, we have two separate little compartments. One of these compartments actually contains all of the different thumbstick attachments you can get that have different heights. So you've got some small ones in here, you've got some longer ones, you've got some normal size ones, and you could toss it on the controller. Kind of omits the need for getting some you know, FPS game freaks or control freaks or whatever they're called. And on top of that, they also throw in a nice 10 foot USB-C type cable to go along with your controller so you can charge it. Now, one of the things is if you guys have that, that charging dock that came with the DualSense PS5, or actually didn't come with it, but the separate optional attachment where you could charge two DualSense controllers, because of the back attachment on this, it doesn't fit on that. So this is actually really necessary if you have it. And if you have a TV set up kind of like I do here, where you've got some 
some distance between where you're going to be sitting and where you're going to be gaming. And that extra length cable is really something that comes in handy. So now let's jump into exactly what are the main differences and what's the really cool stuff that you could do with these controllers. Now before we go ahead and jump into the big differences between each controller, I do want to show you that what else you get in the packaging, which is exceptionally important, is the user manual. Now this is going to teach you exactly how you're going to be doing all of the modifications and programming. They've got some really nicely laid out instructions on how to do it. And in case you lose your copy or you don't understand this, you can also visit their website and find a digital version of it on there as well. Now that one was specific to just having the advanced back button attachment. This one, even though it still has a DualShock 4 controller on it, is still applicable to the DualSense 5 because essentially, like I mentioned earlier, it is more or less the same modification capability that they've taken over from the PS4 up to the PS5. So this book basically kind of tells you how you set your macro functionality, how you're supposed to go ahead and program, what the different sub modes are available in the controller, and how you can even customize those timings to your life based on what is important to you. So just a good important thing to keep in mind that you do get these booklets with you when you order these controllers and you can get them digitally in case if you lose them. All right guys, so now we're gonna discuss what are the primary differences between this controller, which is a macro enabled controller and this controller, which is a modded controller. Now, just as a disclaimer, I'm not gonna go into super in depth on this because frankly, I've covered this before in a DualShock 4 review video from Mega Mods. And like I said again and again and again, a lot of it really is the same functionality that you're getting. It's just for the updated console and the updated controller. So you guys can click on that link up here and go ahead and check out that video if you want to get into more details of how to get into the programming modes and whatnot. If, of course, you don't feel comfortable following the included instruction manual. But in a nutshell, just to keep this a little bit more simple, both of them have very, very similar features. But then again, they have a lot of primary differences which sets them apart. So let's talk about the modded controller first. When you set up this controller and you go and purchase this, you're gonna be asked what different modification packages you want built into this controller. So kind of think of like how Strike Pack works. With the only difference between Strike Pack and this being that you're not gonna be worried about having a computer or software that you need to plug your controller in and to activate your different mods. So for example, if you choose to buy a rapid fire mod or a drop shop mod, turning it on is a as simple as activating the mod switch button back here and pressing the corresponding button that works with that mod and it just activates right away. And you'll have a little LED indicator up here light up with a corresponding color to that mod so you know that it is active. And you follow the same thing in reverse to turn them off. Essentially, you just press the mod button along with that button again and you deactivate it on the fly. So that makes it really handy to have. In addition, you do have the back paddle buttons. Now this is an attachment you can choose to have or choose not to have, it's totally up to you. And it is a minor cost when you're building out a controller. And I would strongly recommend anyone who's building a modded controller, if you're gonna be spending more than hundred bucks on a controller, you may as well deck it out completely and make sure you get something that you're happy with. Try and pimp your controller out as much as you can and get all the different functions that you want in it because it's gonna be worth it at the end of the day, especially if you look into you know competitive gaming or your kill death ratio really matters to you if you're a Call of Duty player, for example. This is something that you really want for those type of games, first person shooters per se. Now, aside from having those mods, like I said, you have a straight remap functionality on the back where you can customize these back paddles to act and behave as any of the buttons on the controller itself. So that way you don't have to have you know your front finger using this, you could use your back fingers doing that, whatever is more ergonomical or more comfortable for you when it comes to your gaming session. So in a nutshell, that is what the modded controller is. You get preloaded mods, you get to put it on there, you have advanced button attachments, and then of course you can customize and make it look as pretty or as ugly as you want. Really just is a matter of taste and a matter of subjective preference. Now let's take a look at the macro controller. So the macro controller, now this guy is similar to that, and I'll explain how it is similar here in a second, but essentially what this comes with is really, really basic level programming capabilities. And when I say basic level, I don't mean to throw shade at Mega Mods and what they've done here because I think it's really fantastic. I mean basic in the sense of user experience, programming, and getting this to work. It's super easy, super intuitive. So on the macro controller, what you're essentially getting is the two advanced back buttons, again, like you have on the modded controller. And these offer the same straight remap functionality like the other one does as well. Now on a macro controller, you have several sub modes. Your first sub mode is your basic straight remap. That lets you take any 
of your buttons that you have on here and program them to the back paddle buttons like you have and just use it straight like that. So X can be packed to the back or you know circle can be done to the left one. It's really up to you what customization you want. The next levels of sub modes really are sub functions of turbo modes, okay? And so the best way for me to explain this is your very, very first sub mode after your, stream, your straight remap, you get to set any one of those buttons to behave in a turbo function. So if you guys are used to playing other games where turbo is essentially just doing a button mashing function, you can set it so that it does that on any buttons you have. So this is great for games where you want to enable a kind of rapid fire type technique, or if you're playing a fighting game where button mashing is involved or wrestling games or any of those type of games where button mashing really is the way to go for it, that's where you're going to have a lot of good use for that. And so within the rest of the sub modes, you essentially have configurations to adjust how that turbo is going to work. So for starters, you have a straight remap, which is your first sub mode. You've got the turbo function. Then you've got a turbo function that functions as you're double pressing that button that you've programmed, a fourth one that does a triple press, and then a fifth one that does a continuous press. So again, I'm not going to demo this on Call of Duty this time because I've already done this in the past and guys, you can take a look at it. It works identical to that. Now, where would someone want to pick up a macro controller over a modded controller, right? Because I told you, you get a bunch of different mods like drop shots and stuff. That's pretty cool things that you may or may not be able to do. Here's the cool thing though. The macro controller essentially lets you create your own mods in a way. This has a mod chip in there, and as you go into those programming modes, you can essentially create your own rapid fire, you can create your own auto heal, your own different types of mods that you see that are available for the macro or the modded controller. You can build them yourself. Now, that does take a little bit of a learning curve, but they have tutorials on Mega Mod's website that actually show you exactly what steps are needed to be taken for you to do that. And obviously, because you're doing that programming yourself, there's some cost cost avoidance being shared with you since you're not going to get one that's pre-programmed you're not going to be paying those mod pack fees of six seven bucks for different mods or you know having to buy a mod pack altogether but if you want something that's straight out of the box easy intuitive to use then going for a modded controller would be the best way to do it so now let's take a closer look at the build quality and the different customization options you guys get and then hopefully we'll wrap this up with you having a good idea of whether this is right for you or whether this is right for you and also where you can go and buy them and check it out so here is the modded controller up close and personal and now you can see all of the different customization i did i chose to have the the limited edition PS4 Pro Midnight Blue color scheme used on a majority of this controller, as well as some cyber orange slash gold color here. It kind of really depends what thing you guys like. But you can see now on my D-pad, or D-pad's here, and on my X and square and triangle circle buttons, I've got the custom letters um, colored as well as you can see the middle plate of it as well and then even on the back you could see or on the top you could see the shoulder triggers now these are mechanical triggers and they actually have shorter presses in they don't really feel like the OEM spongy ones. Now I've done the same for both controllers and this could impact you guys if you play racing games and whatnot, but for most games it shouldn't really be an issue. On the top you can also see there are two sets of LED indicators. One of these corresponds to what your remap will be on the back paddles. The other one corresponds to the different mods that you'll have activated on your controller. On the back we can see more up close and personal the different type of back button attachment that's on here with the center mod switch here and it's actually really really well made i don't see you know a need for this to be changed at all mega mods i think you guys did a fantastic phenomenal job here i actually like the distance that you press this in to get that click and i like that responsiveness just listen to that tactile noise it's pretty good so now here is the macro control that I have custom configured. And in this one, I chose to do a more red versus white kind of contrast look, a little bit different than what I've typically done with the greens and yellows and blues and whatnot. So I decided to go with a little bit more custom here. And you can see on the D-pad, I even have the little marks for the up, down, left, right indicators in red as well. And on my button pad here, you can see that the symbols are also red colored as well as the touchpad and the bottom area here now on the top we have our mechanical triggers similar to what's on the actual modded controller same thing here and it's good that they have a bunch of different color options that you could use with it um, as well you could see i only have one set of led indicator lights here which only corresponds to the macro that you are going to be enabling or programming on this controller so you're not going to have mods on this per se but you still are able to see the indicator for what macro is enabled again moving to the back we've got the same dual back attachment that was on the modded controller so you've got two triggers here to use along with your mod button and i think a reset button on the bottom there in case you want to go ahead and wipe everything from the start 
Now again, very, very nicely made. Just take a look at this build quality. And that's probably one of the most important things that people should consider when you're gonna be picking up a custom controller is how nicely these are made. This is something that just screams quality has a premium price tag to go along with it, rightfully so, and I highly recommend that you guys get one of these for someone who is looking to get, you know, or up their game in Call of Duty, or even for yourself if you wanna treat yourself this holiday season but definitely worth checking out. Well guys, that pretty much wraps up this video. I hope this was useful for you in figuring out if this is the type of DualSense 5 controller you wanna go with, and I hope you were finally able to make sense of what the difference between a macro versus a modded controller is from Mega Mods. If you guys wanna purchase these, I'll leave links in the description below for you guys to check them out. And of course, if you're new to this channel, go ahead and hit subscribe. I am back and making videos again. As you can see, I've had some changes to a studio. I bought a new house. I've just done a whole bunch of stuff over the last year, which I needed to take some time off for myself and my family. And of course, my full-time career. So hopefully I'll be able to get back into making some more content regularly for you folks. But if you're interested in knowing when I drop a new video, you have to stay subscribed and make sure you turn on that little notification icon. That way you'll know whenever I drop new content and you'll be first to watch it. But again, it was a pleasure and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.